Hello, uh, welcome to August Quirkost Workshop. Um, I hope you're having a good summer. And today we're just going to very quickly take you through the basics of Quirkos, but also a bit of a sneak peek of some of the things coming in the latest version of Quirkos. That's version 1.5. That's what I'm using right now, a pre release version that we've been testing. Um, it's very exciting, adding lots of new things. Um, and as always, our upgrades are absolutely free for anyone who's bought Quirkos before. We always want to make sure that everyone's using the most recent version of Quirkos. So this will be something that you can download soon if you haven't bought already. Um, or anytime you buy, it will be available for you when it's released. It'll probably be the end of the month. So hoping to have that out before September. Um, so when you first start Quirkos, um, it's a piece of software that you can download from the website. So it has um, an installer for Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's exactly the same on all those platforms. The version you can download from the website is the full version of the software with all the different features we're going to go over today and a lot more we don't have time to talk about. Um, but the only restriction is that it will last for 30 days and two nights. And our license you'll find are some of the cheapest out there, in fact, probably the cheapest out there. Uh, they're licenses that don't expire. They're for, for you, for your computer. If you upgrade it, you can move it to a new computer. Um, and it lasts um, for as long as you want it. There's no restriction on how long the, the license lasts. Um, so it's an extremely good deal. And we hope it is a very uh, useful way for you to analyze qualitative text data. So when you first start Quirkos, you'll see a screen like this. This has basically got a list of all the different um, projects that we've been looking at recently. Um, if you start a new project with this button on the right here, new project, you first get a little box where you can put in your name. So if you've got multiple people working on a project, you can see who's done what when you merge it together. Um, you'll also see there's an option here for password protected files. If you're doing structure questions, so if you've got data sets that come from a, a survey or something, we've asked the same questions to people, um, you can analyze it with structure questions mode. Um, so just click on new project. It asks you where you want to save it. So I'm just going to put it in this folder here. So it asks you for a file name. Um, and all of the files, all of the data will be saved in this one little file, this QRK file. So you can move it around and email it to yourself. Um, it's best to be saved um, somewhere local on your computer or USB stick or something like that. But it's very easy to back up and email to other people. So I call this workshop example. Save, and now I've got a new nice blank project. So you'll see that the screen is pretty much split in two, and you can change the width of the two columns here. On the right side of the screen, this is where our text will be. On the left side of the screen, this is where our framework will be, the bubbles that make up the, um, the themes of analysis in the project. So if I click on this little plus button here on the bottom right, this gives us some options of how we can bring text into Quirkos. So you can do this from um, files that you have. So if you've got Word files, PDF files, or text files of some sort, you can also copy and paste in here. Um, you can also bring in spreadsheet files, CSV files, if you've got, again, something from an online survey platform like SurveyMonkey or something like that. Um, so I'm just going to select one file here. And I'm actually going to use one of the examples which you can download from our website, um, which is people talking about um, the Scottish referendum for independence. Um, this is a real research project that we did, and we've got all of the coded data there. So we can take, for example, Adrian's transcript here. This is a Word file. You can see it will give you a little preview here what the text looks like. And I'll just click Import. And now we've got a, all of the text of that document imported in here. So that's looking good. Now you can add as many files as you like like this. And you can also add um, a whole folder of files if you like. I'm just going to put in one more here. So again, I'm just selecting another source here. So I'm bringing Alistair's as well. Right, so now you see we've got these tabs here that we can switch between. These are the different sources which we've put into our project. These are all saved together in that file. And if you click on this button here next to the tabs, you'll see actually a list, a long list, which you can sort through um, of all the different projects, sorry, all the different sources you have in your project and how much you've coded them. So that's very useful to, to if you've got a big project with lots of things on it. So now we've got some sources in here. We, there's a way that we can describe them. 
this grid button at the top right here, this is the source properties. So these are other things that we want to say about the properties, uh, very specific variables that we want them to have. So if I click on this plus button here, we can create a new property, which we'll call age, for example. And this person can be 37. We've created a new property called age and a variable called 37. Now, if we tab over to Alistair's project source here, we'll see that the age category doesn't have anything associated. So we can choose 37 because that was a previously used value. We can just drop down and put something else in there. So we always use 42, so we'll always have 42. And we can have as many properties as we like here. They can be numeric, they can be text-based, they can be uh, discrete drop-down variables. Um, and it helps the data entry here uh, and a bunch of different features which kind of help this go in there quickly. So we'll close the source properties of this little X here. And we'll go back to this main view here so we can see Alistair's source of text here. So let's start um, creating some of the themes that we might be interested in here. So one of them, for example, might be when we first heard about the referendum. So clicking on that plus button there creates a new bubble, a quirk, which is called in Quirkos. Now these are the themes or nodes which you use to explore and analyze your data. So that's this, let's call this one first heard. We can put in a long good description here. When people first heard there was going to be a referendum. We can choose any color we like here. Choose oh, some kind of greeny blue, why not? And then we'll click the save button. And now you see we've got a little bubble here. It's been put in a random place on Canvas for when we first heard about it. So this bit here is where we first heard about it. So we can just click and drag to select this text, click anywhere in it and drag it, just as you would drag to move around text in any other file, or in any other software, and drop it onto the bubble for first heard. You'll see that that's got the number one on it now, so there's one piece of coding on it. And also there's this colored highlight here, which shows that it belongs to this topic with this color. So if I go to Adrian's source now, um, so this person says they first thought about it in 1979, so this is something different. We can drag and drop that onto the first herd bubble there. You see it's got a bit bigger. So the size of the bubbles shows you how much you've coded on them. And if you double click on any of the bubbles, you can see what's been coded on them. So here you can see here's a piece of text from Adrian, and here's a piece of text from Alistair, and they're both about when they first heard about the referendum. Okay, so let's create another theme here. Um, and let's call this uh, process. Maybe that's something that we're interested in here. In the green, I can see someone here, they're saying, I was very disappointed by how they had a process. So we'll drag and drop that here onto the process bubble. Great. Um, what else do we have here? I wonder if Alice has said anything about process. Well, why don't we use a text search and find out if someone's used that specific word? So this little magnifying glass here will show us the search uh, options here. If we put in the word process, uh, right. So that's <laughs> the only time it comes up is that time Adrian mentions it. But maybe there's a synonym here for process that we could use. So action, that might be good. Cognitive process, litigate, march, mental process, operation. That's relevant. So you can choose which words are relevant to you. I don't think physical process is here. Procedure probably is. Serve, sue, summons, no. Work, maybe these are all good things. Actually, work is a bit vague. So if I search for those other ones now, Oh, they didn't appear either. Let's put working because I'm sure that's going to come up with something. Yeah, so now we've got procedures and work coming in there as well. So, so these all from Adrian's source. <laughs> so this person, it's all come from Adrian. He's the only person talking about procedure and work. That's obviously the kind of language that he likes to use. But we can code from here. These little bubbles let us load more of the source so we can read the whole sentence if we need to. And we'll put that in there process, oh, regional assemblies, I think they were regional assemblies in Welsh. Great, drag that onto the process there. So as you can see, it's very easy to code from the search results. And that's a very quick way to go through if there are keywords 
that your respondents are definitely going to be talking about. So that's basically how we can do coding here. Um, now I'll also show you that it's quite easy to group these. So for example, we did want to have a separate category for work. We can drag and drop this work bubble we've created onto the process bubble. And now process has this subcategory of work. Um, and if we go back to our search here, put something in, how that would work, we can put that straight into the work bubble. So now if we double click on process, we'll see we've also got subcategory for work. We click on that and we can see exactly that. Now, if we want to copy these, um, what we can do is, there's a button here, all. We can copy that. And then if we start with Word, for example, and copy and paste. It tells us where those quotes come from. Remember, they all came from Adrian. Um, and that allows us to put that in however we're writing up our data. OK, so those are the kind of basics about describing the sources, arranging the quirks and bubbles here. What I'm going to do now is um, cheat and open a project where a lot of the coding has been done already. So if I go to the referendum coded example here, again, you can download this from our website, the complete coded version to have a look what a finished project would look like. Let's zoom in a little bit on the canvas here, and you'll see we've got these great all these bubbles here, uh, my very messy attempt at coding. I should have really spaced this out a little bit more. Um, but it shows us um, all the different things that we've got here. So if you remember, we had those source properties. Let's see how we can explore them. So if we run the query view here, what we can do is put this in single quote. Um, we can see examples um, from any of the properties we have there, or even just from one person or levels or when a particular date, or particular, what a particular person did. And then, so if we want to see, yeah, that's fine. Everything that the women said in the project, we can just run the query. And we can say, okay, predominantly the women said negative things. But is that relevant? Is that something that other people were saying as well? Or we can do a side-by-side -side query, in fact. So we can choose male as our example here and we can see actually well that's the same kind of thing so uh, men were just as negative as women were and we can see all the different quotes of what people about the women on the left the men on the right what they said about the, the negative aspects of campaigning and if there's any kind of significant difference between them so that's a very useful tool and we can stack more and more criteria here if we want to see just the men who came who voted a particular way for example we can make that more and more refined or more and more vague as we want and then we can generate a report with those examples you can generate a report for, with um, all of the data in the project um, but this from the query view will just show you just the particular elements that you wanted to see. So this example, it's just the female um, a report, just from the females that we are going to look at here. And the report has a lot of options here that you can choose about what you want to appear in your project. You can see here some statistics about the overall project. And then here below, we'll see. So these are the quotes. Um, sorted by theme or by person, how you want to sort it, which are just from the women in the project. So that could be quite useful. And you've also got the images here. So here's the overview graph. And you can drag and drop this as an image if you want to include this in a PowerPoint presentation or a report that you're writing. Uh, so that's that. One other thing I'll show you, which is we've updated a little bit in the new version. You'll notice the report generation is a lot faster now in the current version if you've used it before. Um, but we've also got a new overlap view. So if we want to see what positive things people were saying, if text has been coded, the same piece of text has been coded in two different ways, so about positive and something else, we can get Quirkos to look up all those instances and see if there's any kind of patterns there. That's the overlap view. We've updated this to make it a little clearer what's going on. So the outside, you see this row of um, all the bubbles that don't overlap at all. And in the middle, you see the closest one is SNP. So people are saying most positive things about the Scottish National Party. And if you look down here, you can actually see, again, all of the different uh, quotes that different people and different sources have said. And again, we can copy all this, and put this into Word. So there we've got um, all of the things that different people said 
he just said these are all positive things about the SMP so that's going to be quite useful um, now another thing we can do is create a word file so with all our coding in and here you'll see color coded we've basically exported all the transcripts all the data and sources that we had in the project as a standard word file with these color coded comments which show how we've highlighted so this is about politicians this is about scotland so it's very easy just to see um we can do a scotland by daniel and that will just show here all of the different comments that we have where i've coded that as being about scotland so that's a very fun way to explore the data you also see that you can bring in your data using the csv export to um, an excel file so this is again has been updated so we've got much more useful information in here and you'll see we've got title the source where it came from and then the text the actual quote that we've put in there from each person so you can see um, if you order this by quirk title for example sort a to z they've got everything people said about the election everything people said about age salmon bbc bias class yada 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 and you can do it by source as well or how often it overlaps or who did the work so it gives you the ability to graph and do much more statistical analysis on your data if you want to so we don't need to save that and that's a very brief kind of overview of what's been going on there i'm just going to give you a sneak preview of a couple of other things which are new in the new version of quercos we already showed you the improved overlap views we also improved the traditional kind of tree view um, this now shows a lot more information is a lot more neater scrolls a lot faster so it's a lot easier to work with we saw lots of people who had wanted to see the descriptions all the time or, or long file names using this view a lot so we've tried to improve this and make that more useful for you um, we've also um, taken on board a lot of um, comments and suggestions for small features that pe people want added the largest one we have here is actually a project merge so there's now the ability to merge projects together now this is super useful if you've got multiple people working on a project they're working remotely in different places some people are coding some sources you want to do double coding uh, or anything like that you can now bring all those projects files together um, and you can have loads of different files at once if you've got dozens of your postdocs slaving away over your data um, and then you can see how people have been working and, and see it all together so the project merge is, is a new function here it's quite a big one and something a lot of people have been asking for um, and that's really going to help a lot of people i think um, we've also made quite a lot of improvements to uh, the speed and just the clarity of quite a lot of things and there's a couple of other secret features as well which i'm not going to show you right now uh, you'll have to wait until that's released at the end of september um, if you do want to test it do let us know contact and we're happy to send you the, the beta version of it there's a lot of bug fixes as well so if you've had any problems with strange glitches and things like that strange things showing or crashes um, which is kind of a rare thing we've seen a couple of people have in very certain situations we think we squashed all of those bugs now so we're pretty excited about the new release and this will be coming at the end of the month so if you haven't tried quercos yet do give it a go uh, you just go to quercos.com and you can download straight from the front page or windows mac or, or linux however you want to see that and you'll also see um they're available online here on the learn page and we've got um video overviews we've got um manuals here um in-depth materials and we've also got powerpoint slides um, and workshops that we run like this one and in-person workshops you want to book some of those with us um, lots of things that frequently ask questions about how to use Quercos, how the files work, um, the different formats they will support. But if you've got any questions, get in touch with us as well. You can always get um, send us an email, uh, support at quercos.com or info at quercos.com. You can also tweet us. We're always very busy on Twitter. Um, and you can also call us or talk to us on Skype as well. Our username is just Quercos. Uh, we try to be online all the time so do drop us a, a chat email request or we can always do a video demonstration if there's a particular feature that you're stuck on so that's basically everything we wanted to cover today uh thanks so much for 
dropping in and watching. Do watch out for the new version coming at the end of August. It's very soon now. I said that'll be a free update for everyone. Um, and if you want to um, eventually go and buy a license, you'll find there is a cheap list start from 59 US dollars uh, for students, sorry, 65 US dollars for students, 49 pounds. Um, and they are extremely good value as they, these licenses don't expire. Uh, you can buy direct and instant on the website. We're also, also happy to do purchase orders and things like that. So thanks so much again for coming along um, and let us know if you have any other questions.